This week on Tech Wrap, we round up the best April Fool's pranks from the top tech companies. It's not a Facebook phone, but it's pretty close. The social networking giant unveils home for Android. And Samsung launches its iPad mini challenger, the Galaxy Note 8.0, in the Philippines. Does it measure up to competition? Hi, I'm Michael Josh, and this is TechRap. It's our 24th episode, our first for the month of April 2013. Did you get pranked last Monday? Well, April Fool's Day has to be one of the most, if not the most favorite day of tech companies, as it lets them pull pranks on unsuspecting users. Google, for example, had a whole bag of tricks in store for users this year. Some of the best ones include Google Nose, that supposedly allows users to search for scents based on the Google Aroma Base, which includes up to 15 million centibytes of smells. Google also pulls an early prank with Google Analytics telling website administrators they're getting traffic from the International Space Station. But perhaps the most surprising and ridiculous prank is the announcement that YouTube is shutting down. What would tech rap be without YouTube? Well, in a three-minute video, the world's most popular video sharing site explains its purpose was merely to search for the best video with the grand announcement of the best one in 2023. Twitter also jumped in on the April Fool's Fund, saying the company will now be called Twitter without the vowels. Miss the vowels? Well, don't worry. You can purchase them if you subscribe to Twitter's premium service for $5 a month. Website for artists DeviantArt announces the world's first ever dating site made specifically for artists, calling it DeviantHeart.com. Lastly, Japanese electronics company Sony recognizes the right of animals to access technology with the release of its Animalia line. Products include earphones for cats, doggy TV, and in-cage speakers for hamsters. Following years of speculation about Facebook joining the smartphone race, the social networking giant finally speaks up this week. No, they are not making a Facebook phone. Instead, they are building over the Android operating system with a new user experience called Facebook Home. Facebook Home is a series of apps that turn your phone into what CEO Mark Zuckerberg describes as a new living social phone, which puts an emphasis on people and not apps. Home replaces the Android lock screen with cover feed, which looks like a visual slideshow of your contacts' latest status updates, photos, and links. Status updates float over a user's cover photo, the same way image descriptions float over the posts with images. When you get a new message or email, they come in as notifications, which you can attend to or click away. At the bottom of your home screen is an icon with your profile picture that represents you. Click on this, and it brings up three options, messages, apps, and quick access to your last app, the last app that you used. Another interesting new feature is called chat heads, bobble heads that represent incoming Facebook messages and texts from contacts. Chat heads hover over any open app so you can continue conversations even while immersed in something else like Instagram. Speaking of apps, all your apps are available via the app drawer. Just swipe up to access them. With that out of the way, here are some initial thoughts. Since this replaces the Android lock screen, if you choose to use Facebook Home, which you can turn on and off, you will lose access to things like widgets and my favorite, pull down notification shades. So that's something to keep in mind. Also in the future, Facebook may put ads on the cover feed, which could be a major turnoff. Also, the purpose of your lock screen, at least for me, is to protect my phone from the prying eyes of people. So I'm not sure if users are ready to get their personal posts from friends front and center on their phones. All that considered, it looks great, and we're excited to give it a try. Users of the HTC One X, the HTC One X Plus, the Samsung Galaxy S3, and the Samsung Galaxy Note 2 will get to download Facebook Home first via the Google Play Store on April 12th. Other phone manufacturers will have to wait a little bit longer. Facebook will be releasing monthly updates with new features and supported Android phones. Twitter updates its Android and iOS apps this week to include support for new Twitter card extensions it unveiled earlier this week. Twitter cards are those extensions to your tweets that show you previews of content embedded in a tweet, like article thumbnails and summaries when you tweet links. 
and YouTube videos that you can play without having to leave the service. This week's Twitter card additions are photo galleries and mobile app linking. The former allows users to see thumbnails of all the photos embedded in an article that's shared, while mobile app linking allows users to download an app that is used to post or share a tweet. Oh, and while we're on the subject of Twitter, if you recall back in August of last year, we mysteriously lost the ability to take a look at all the photos a person has tweeted. Recently, we discovered Media Grid is back. All you have to do is navigate to a user's profile and under the main menu, click on View All Photos and Videos, and voila, problem solved. Could BlackBerry be prepping two new devices that run BlackBerry 10 OS? Well, take all of this with a grain of salt, but a tweet from at BB10Leaks shows off the company's supposed roadmap, revealing plans for a tablet called the B10 and a phablet called the U10, all slated for a third and fourth quarter release. BlackBerry could also be working on a low-end phone. This week, a user of the BlackBerryOS.com forum posts this photo of a previously unseen plastic BlackBerry phone that looks to be running BlackBerry 10. What's for sure is that another BlackBerry phone, the Q10, which comes with a built-in keyboard, goes on sale in the United Kingdom starting this April. Following its unveil at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona in February, the Samsung Galaxy Note 8 is ready for prime time. The 8-inch tablet goes on sale in the Philippines on April 13th. How does it fare against its competitors like the iPad mini? Check out our hands out review. Coming to the Philippines this April 13th is the Samsung Galaxy Note 8. Because of its 8-inch form factor, many will compare it to Apple's iPad mini, which is what we did. Side by side, the Note 8 looks much larger. The iPad mini has a glass and aluminum finish, while the Note 8 is made of polycarbonate plastic. We like the finish of the iPad better. Its diamond cut chamfered edges are really sexy, but the design comes at a trade-off. The iPad feels much more delicate, the Note 8 a bit more rugged. The Note 8 comes with a 2 megapixel front-facing camera and a 5 megapixel rear camera. Here are some of the shots we took using the device's main camera. Pictures came out great in sunlight. There was a bit of noise in low light situations. We noticed color accuracy was a bit on the blue side with auto white balance turned on. But overall, photos look better when compared side by side with shots taken using an iPad mini. The version of the Note 8 that's available in the Philippines is Wi-Fi plus 3G. And unlike the Wi-Fi plus 3G iPad mini, this one allows users to make voice calls Hi, Jessica. How are you? I'm good. Uh, we're you? Do I'm good. We're doing a feature on TechRap. You want to say hello to um, the TechRap viewers? Oh, hello, viewers. And send text messages. The Note 8, like its younger brother, the Note 2, comes with an S Pen, a stylus made just for the device. One little detail they don't talk about, but I love, is how in note-taking mode, it looks for the tip of the pen and will ignore your palm, even if you rest it on the writing surface. Also like the Note 2, you get multi-window support. So for example, you can be on Rappler.com on your browser and simultaneously on your messaging app, where you might want to copy a bit of text from your browser and paste it on your messaging app so that you can send it via SMS. Some new features on the Note 8 include a new reading mode that when turned on, adjusts your screen brightness based on your room's lighting conditions, giving you the best reading experience. They've also added an infrared blaster on the side of the device, which works with their remote control app. We tried it with an LG TV and we successfully turned it on, but unfortunately, the programming guide isn't available in our region yet. And finally, users get a new app called Awesome Note, where you can organize your calendars, to-dos, and other notes. Specs-wise, the Note 8 is superior to the iPad mini, a higher pixel density, faster processor, more RAM, and slightly better battery life. The Note 8 also outscored the iPad mini in our unofficial benchmark test using Geekbench. But to be completely honest, in real-world use, we didn't notice a performance difference between both devices. What sets one device apart from the other are the available apps, built-in software, and whether or not you get a stylus with the device. As both an Android and iOS user, I'm still torn about which one to get. That said, for 23,990 pesos, the Galaxy Note 8 is a steal and gets a big thumbs up from us. And that was TechRap. Never miss an update. Follow Rappler.com on social media 
Send tech questions to techwrap at rappler.com or send me a message on Twitter using the hashtag techwrap. And continue to look out for new shows. We post them every Sunday on rappler.com. That's all for this week, folks. I'm Michael Josh. Thanks for dropping by.